Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, back and ready to do a movie review this week after two weeks because the last time I reviewed a movie was Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that I saw in theaters which is an excellent sequel and better than the 2020 original which I also love where Sonic the Hedgehog speeds into action with his electro charge uh, power he's joining in with his new pal Tails where he can spin around with two tails yeah, the fox who who just turns his tails into a helicopter and, and takes Sonic around to Siberia and all these other places. And also to defeat Knuckles, which Dr. Robotnik had brought him along so they could go steal the Master Emerald, which creates this very strong power. And I guess if you already saw the movie, you'll probably see the, the climax where... It just turned into those Chaos Emeralds, and and yes, he did turn into Super Sonic. <laughs> yeah. There is a sequel at the end of the movie, but I don't want to give that away. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, I, um, I've been busy for a while. Um, the usual stuff, I've been, you know, watching some movies, uh, doing all this, taking some breaks, and working on some more commercial breaks on my channel. You know, hoping everything will be all right. On top of that, and you wouldn't believe this, but I had to spend a lot of time trying to get some more episodes of At The Movies, or at this rate, At The Movies with Eber and Roper and all that. Yeah, because I actually recorded this back in, in late 2007, all the way until 2010. But I did tend to tape some more in 2011 when, when it was on PBS. So they ended it there too. Um, yeah, because I recorded them all on, on all my DVD-Rs that I had. You know, I had a huge collection of these that I started collecting and recording. You know, ever since I started buying those DVD-Rs uh, in stores. You know, that's where I started taping movies and TV shows on there when I had DirecTV. And Dish Network and all that, you know, before you know, I moved to this place and and so on and so forth. Although I did use some more DVDRs, you know, just so I can get some other stuff as well. So I was posting them on on another website called BitChute. As you may know, I mentioned this before, back in 2019. Um, that was going to be my alternative site, so in case if something goes wrong with YouTube because of the Copa issue, so I just want to keep myself safe from distance around. But luckily that turned out alright, so nothing went wrong there. Thank goodness. But I just really wish YouTube would stop making these radical changes so much because they're just making things worse. I'm just glad that I still have my channel you know, up and running. But these damn copyright policies need to stop. You know, because these videos are supposed to be fair use. I don't understand. This, this just doesn't make any sense. But luckily another website doesn't do that. So I'm safe on that. But I'm just happy that at least I'm taking some time to uploading them. But even though it's not fully complete because there were a couple more episodes I have left... But it's going to take a lot of time to, to dig right deeper through all these uh, tolts that I have. Because they're all in the closet. Yeah, and I had to dig right deeper um, two weeks ago because um, I thought to myself, maybe I could post some more. But then I'm having some troubles because some of the DVDRs are having trouble trying to rip some of them. And then there are times when you know one of them had become unreadable. And... Now that's what I was afraid of. I mean, I, I had them for years. I, I had them since um, the 2000s, like the mid-2000s. I mean, I started getting them since 2004. And I've been doing all this stuff ever since. You know, I've been recording movies and TV shows on there. And I've been doing them for, for like a decade... In, in a half or so, so it's interesting how I've been doing these. 
So I'm glad that there are ones that still work, and I hope they'll stay that way forever. But there are times when some of them are pretty cheap, so now you know something's going to go wrong. But I just hope everything will be okay. <laughs> okay. But either way, I, I did rip some more episodes. Um, I even managed to find a few online, so I, I, so I was kind of surprised to find. So I figured this will take me some time, but if I f end up doing some more, then we'll see. Because again, pretty soon I'm going to be moving, and then I know I'm still staying in this place for a while. But we just haven't found a place yet, so we're still on the edge to find one. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, enough of that. Uh, I'm going to do uh, a movie review this week, and I just picked this up from Disney Movie Insiders. Uh, it's been a while, and because I had to double up my points to get this, you know, after getting some more Disney titles on 4K and Blu ray, and it doubles it up, so, and then getting all these bonus points on, online, or when there's like some other special event going around. You know, you get more points. And this is where I'm trying to save it up so I can get some more movies on there or any other stuff. So the one movie I picked up uh, recently is The Good Dinosaur. A Disney and Pixar film. Which is a story about a green dinosaur known as the Op Optosaurus. Who suddenly uh, befriends with a cave boy. It, it basically tells... What would it be like in an alternate history where suddenly a meteor hits Earth and it passes through where all the dinosaurs are at? And I mean, what if if the asteroid didn't kill all the dinosaurs, turning them into fossils and all? Then we'll have a whole different experience. And that's what the story was about right here. But not much to to all uh, Pixar standards, but they really went for a very nice touch. So they were going for something different. And, hey, it's cool. Anyway, this is the Ultimate Collector's Edition. There is a 4K release of this. Uh, they released it later. Uh, but this one has uh, not only the, the regular Blu-ray, but it has a Blu-ray 3D inside with a DVD and a digital code. So this came out in 2016, you know, after their film release in 2015, which came out on Thanksgiving weekend on November 25th. Unfortunately, though, it was not a big hit. Um, it flopped really hard. Uh, out of its 175 through 200 million budget, and only grows. 333.2.2 million worldwide. Um, it, it didn't kind of grow strongly in North America, so sadly, this was their first um, box office bomb that they ever had. I mean, usually Pixar would, would always grow stronger with their films. I mean, they've become very successful. They actually earned a lot of rewards and all for their achievement, but unfortunately, though, um, this didn't even get nominated for an Oscar. It actually snubbed, I think. Uh, it did get nominated for a Golden Globe, though, and but it didn't win. And I know it got some awards, even Annie. I think it did one, just just one Annie award, but that's it. Nothing much. But still, um, I'm just gonna show you the Blu-ray. See what it looks like. Uh, yeah, it has the code. You can see Arlo and, and this this young boy right here <laughs> on the back. So I already used the code. Uh, there's just some flyers for Disney Movie Club. You know, with all these titles that were available at the time. Yeah, which he picked four Disney movies for just a dollar. Yeah, it was a deal back then. Here's of course the the Blu-ray and the Blu-ray 3D included. So you see <laughs> two images of, um, now I'm going to try to see if I can take uh, one of them out, uh, just put it on right here. Um, yeah, you just seen <laughs> more of the, the same of Arlo and 
and the cave boy. Actually, the cave boy is named Spot. <laughs> yeah, that that's what his name is. Um, yeah, some beautiful landscapes here of the mountains. Uh, okay, just putting it back to the way it was. Okay, there we go. They're so just going around exploring all alone, right here. <laughs> Alright, so everything's okay. Yeah, they. So, great blue wave right here. Has some features included. Um, it's also told that the digital code, which was uh, at the time when Disney owned uh, Movies Anywhere, which is now simply Movies Anywhere, <laughs> uh, they added um, two hours of bonus content. So, it's still available and you can still find it uh, once you sign up to Movies Anywhere for digital. Um, but you, you're lucky to get all the features included here. And it also has a short called uh, Sanjay's uh, Super Team. So this is a really cool feature. But anyway, I, I would definitely consider this to be the most underrated uh, Pixar film, uh, joining in with A Bug's Life. Um, and maybe a few others, but, I, you know, out of all the Pixar films we've been getting, you know, I, I wish this film had gotten some attention. It deserves. Anyway, let's, uh, get right to it. Now, um, apparently, uh, Bob Peterson, who came up with the original concept in 2009, he wanted to do a movie about being set in an alternate history where what would it be like if the dinosaurs exist in present day? So they thought they were going to come up with some some different stories about that and how it's going to explore with dinosaurs joining in with cave people you know, who are humans as we all know. And then we get to see all these landscapes around, all these mountains, and all this other stuff that it's included. So it seems like, you know, now we get to see what it would be like. It's kind of like how Jurassic Park was, in a way. When they, when they had to discover DNA from, from a bird, and that's how they try to revive all these dinosaurs coming back to life so that we never expected to see. But for its nature, I mean, dinosaurs could be really, you know, not only for their living creatures and, and their carnivores and all, but, you know, they can go around hunting people, too. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So it does look very realistic, the way it was captured, you know, photorealistically well done. I mean, Pixar has been doing that for decades, though. And they really know how to make these films more sharper, edgier, and better than ever. And not only that, to provide an actual story to tell through its characters. So it's not just about, you know, CGI in general for the animation. Okay, anyway. But uh, then uh, they were doing some major changes going around, too. They had to do some revising. Uh, they were going to try to get um, a big cast to join in. Like They got Frances McDormand, granted. But they were also going to get actors like John Lithgow, uh, Lucas Neff, uh, along with Neil Patrick Harris, Judy Greer, and Bill Hader. And they were going to release the film in 2013, so this would have been after the movie Monsters University. So I think that was going to probably come out um, sometime in the fall, which at this rate, it was going to be Thanksgiving weekend in 2013. But because uh, they were in the competition with another Disney movie coming out, and on top of that, they just released a Marvel film. That this was going to be tough for sale for, for a Pixar film to come out uh, during that holiday season. And 
that turned out to be Frozen. And for the Dark World uh, came out too. So because of that, they had to put on hold uh, for this movie. And then they were going to get some new actors to replace them. And that's what they did. And they had to change some stories too. Later on, they, they lay off like 67 employees of Pixar. And they even closed down Pixar in Canada. Can you believe that? Bob Peterson just left. I mean, because they were having some struggling on fixing some of the problems, especially with the third act that they were going to go for, for the story. That they decided to have Peter Son to join in, um, along with John Lasseter, Lee uh, Unkridge, and Mark Andrews to see if they can come up with a, a better ending and, and a better, yeah, like a, a, a more stronger uh, climax and and maybe hopefully the story will will still stay on put. That was the case. So it was a trouble production. But whatever they did and whatever they could, they did what's best for this film. Even if it doesn't become a hit, which it didn't, it would still be remembered as another uh, Pixar film to be cherished by for your family. But here we go. Uh, the movie stars uh, Raymond Oka, I don't know if I said it right, uh, with Jack uh, McGraw, Jack Bright, Sam Elliott, Anna Paquin. A.J. Buckley, Steve Zahn, Manny Froon, Stephen K. Hunter, Jeffrey Wright, Francis McDormand, who's one of the originals that they picked, so she agreed. Uh, Marcus Schreibner, Ryan Tipo, Malaya Padilla, Peter Son, Dave Boat, Carrie Poff, Colin Mackenzie Grant and John Ratzenberger, yeah, regular for Pixar, and of course Cliff Clavin from Cheers. It's written by Meg LaFoe, I don't know if I said that right either. It's joining in with Peter Son, Eric Benson, Kelsey Mann, and Bob Peterson who came up with the original concept, and it's directed by Peter Son. The movie begins said 65 million years ago where an asteroid was ready to hit Earth, causing a major extinction to all dinosaurs, turning into fossils, and probably having a lot of major disasters with eruptions, you know, earthquakes and all that. Probably going to destroy you know, civilization as we know it. But in an alternate universe, what it would it be like if an asteroid didn't hit them and winds up passing safely, all the dinosaurs will consider themselves lucky to be alive, uh, along with the humans and animals too. And, and no major disaster happening in lands and mountains, everywhere. Even the forests too. So a million years later, we meet these green long neck dinosaurs known as Optosaurus. We are joined by a corn farmer, Henry and Ida, you know, a husband and wife together with their three children, Libby, Buck, and Arlo. Yes, both Buck and Libby are brothers and sisters. You know, they're going around playing with each other, you know, fooling around and all that. While Arlo is the outcast of the three siblings, who's slightly clumsy, um, he's a coward, he's trying so hard to fit in with the group, but he was ready to give up. It wasn't easy for him. So of course, as they grew up, um, their siblings uh, started to form a task to do all the chores that Henry and Ida 
had chosen them to do by building a cornfield with Libby creating all the marks and also Buck is ready to splash some water well both of them are doing the same too so they're ready to put some seeds on there um, with Henry and Ida so they can grow all their corns and be ready to put inside a stone built silo that Henry and Ida have built and together if they become so successful they'll be able to put a mud print to make their mark so they'll be remembered by. Arlo on the other hand well, they're being so successful for Libby and Buck, you know, to grow all their crops. Uh, Arlo had to take a job by feeding the chickens, and it wasn't an easy job for him to do. It was so difficult that he ends up getting scared, being frightened to be chased down by all these chickens around. <laughs> and not to mention, Buck is always teasing him a lot, too. No kidding. But Henry eventually helps them out by taking him to do another chore was to actually guard the silo and hoping this will be a better task for him so he'll be able to earn that mark by trapping a critter who is about to steal all their food inside the silo. So they had to set a trap about that so that way they'll finally keep their food safe and that turned out to be a cave boy which he'll soon to be named Spots and he's been going around stealing all their food and Arlo was just about to trap him but then he accidentally let him go and Henry decided to take Arlo all the way straight to the ravine just to show some bravery but then a flash flood had appeared all the way when they were going across the stream to the Clawtooth Mountain and then Henry was about to save Arlo before he ends up getting killed by the debris you know it was like a mudslide ready to happen so without his fodder now that he died Arlo had decided to do some more workload that he was assigned to do from his family but he spotted uh, Spot once again he blames him for what he did since he lost his fodder and then it chases him directly into the river where now both of them are being swept downstream and he was knocked unconscious by a rock and wakens to find himself miles from home so he's now stuck in the middle of the forest where he finally continues to chase down Spot and then Spot eventually starts bringing some food around yeah like the berries and and all these other kinds of different berries around uh, even the ones that causes them to turn particularly dazed <laughs> oh that was a funny scene too and then the um, Later Spot, uh, the cave boy, fences off by a large snake, so he ends up uh, biting one, attacking them. And then next thing you know, near the forest of Woodbush, we had a nearby eccentric uh, Starocosaurus, uh, which had all these uh, birds uh, and other creatures hanging around his uh, entire head, who actually wanted to keep the boy. But Arlo decided to to take him along, and now they bond for each other. They're about to explain about their family, so now they're on their journey to go back to where they came from. But it became a difficult task for them to follow because now they're being the, getting into a run-in with another flash flood, where it led to a big. Uh, a big disaster which now it losses their way to go back home so now they're stuck in a 
different uh, place and now they somehow got spotted by a bunch of paradactyls, a whole band of them. At first they thought it was going to be a rescue operation but it turned out that they are savagely carnivores and they're ready to attack uh, Spot and and also Arlo and everything going around before they were ready to to escape from them which happened to be saved by a pair of Tyrannosaurus Rex and they turn out to be the tough uh, carnivores to become the heroes and their name Nash and Ramsey uh, joining in with their father Butch so they got lost uh, on a herd of longhorns because they're about to chase after a bunch of uh, velociraptors horned around and it this was like a big chase that's happening it led to a stampede and then during that night you know they're just having somewhat of a almost like a campfire and they're just talking about all the stories about you know fear that we learned that even tough dinosaurs can be afraid too but it also teaches a long message for Arlo so he'll be able to become you know brave too and he'll have the courage to to save his friend if something dangerous about to happen well it led to that too to the journey for them to go back home so hopefully they won't get lost it only gets worse when all these paradactyls were chasing them back and they went straight into the river again with another flood happening and Spot is already on on top of the log and, and then Arlo just fell all the way down since they already got uh, Spot and now he begins to spot uh, his father uh, Henry so he came and saved his life but it might have been a fig of imagination or he thought maybe he was alive all this time but it turns out he was a ghost and he was telling him that to go save his friend and that's where he finally had the courage to to go after these paradactyls and save Spot and they finally got even with them because they all got washed away straight into the waterfall and then finally, because um, Spot did spot a, a cave person before, but he thought this was just somewhat of an imagination or something. Well, it turns out that, yes, his cave family had finally appeared. And this got me very emotional and very sad because it did shed a tear in my eye. Yeah, this was a very touching moment when... Spot had finally found his cave family, his father, mother, and siblings to join in. And now Spot wanted Arlo to come with him, but nope. He has to be where, where he belongs and for his family. So that way he'll go back to his journey. So he'll finally find where he belongs. So now Spot is finally back to his family and Arlo had raced all the way as, as fast as he could to finally make it where he he finally spot his mom, Ida, as well as Libby and Buck. So now they're finally together, safe and sound. And once he continues to do some more work, because now he finally never gave up, Yes, he finally made his mark onto the silo, exactly as we pictured it. So, a wonderful adventure. I'm sure for those who were lucky to experience this in digital 3D in theaters, as opposed to some people watching this in 2D, that they will experience uh, some eye-popping uh, sequences, I mean, even the shots with the dinosaurs around, but most of all the scene where, and this is a prime example, where Arlo was throwing spots all the way up in the air 
into this foggy cloud and then he begins to spot the Clawtooth Mountain you know with the sun beneath it all I mean that's just a wonderful adventurous very stunning um, shot right there that they had and especially even if for those who own a blu-ray 3d player with 3d glasses and a 3d tv which i i know it's starting to become obsolete at this point on but they do play blu-ray 3d's on, on 4k players too and i think you could probably experience it on a 4k tv as well to have a, a very stunning picture of all the details of the landscapes and all <laughs> so you'll just have fun with it and it's a great film that Pixar has ever made and I really wish it had the attention that it deserves um, it had some incredible beautiful landscapes uh, everything from the Clawtooth Mountain to the forests the river and all these other lands around, the crops, the silos, the rocks, even the details of the characters of every single dinosaurs around that we saw, even if, if there could have been plenty of others to follow. It was just nicely detailed and Pixar has always have done a lot of photorealistic uh, imagery in all their films because they look exactly as real as they could be. And having the fact that this movie was shot in 3D, because then again all their films were in 3D to begin with, I mean because CGI is third dimensional. You do get plenty of details around and not a single flaw right there but the story even if it's not up to their standards I still thought it was a strong story nevertheless because it is about an outcast and it's great to have a character like Arlo who's a character who's as clumsy as he could be and a coward but deep down inside with the with his father teaching him how to do everything he could he'll never he'll do what he can to to never give up and be able to be able to spot bravery and courage and also to have love and a warm heart especially when he meets uh, what was supposed to be a critter turns out to be a young cave boy Name Spot, and that key boy is definitely you know <laughs> adventurous and and crazy and all, but all in all, it's it's kind of like a a boy and his dog story in a way. Yeah, I mean, except you have a dinosaur who's a creature and a human who's just like an animal, like a dog, because <laughs> after all, we're mammals. <laughs> it also have a lot of dark moments here and it has some funny moments in there but most of all it's incredible the perfect journey film to check out for your friends and family uh, the voice acting is just wonderful I mean I know it would have been excellent if they had used this particular talented cast of John Lithgow, Neil Patrick Harris, Judy Greer, Bill Hader come to mind. But even though they got Frances McDormand, and I'm glad they didn't take her off because she's a very talented actress. And after all, you know, she was in the movie Fargo, for crying out loud. So she deserves a lot of credit. But all the uh, actors, such as Raymond Okoa, I think I said it right, hopefully. <laughs> And you got other legend actors like Sam Elliott, Anna Paquin, A.J. Buckley, Steve Zahn, and Jeffrey Wright come to mind. It just makes it incredible to know that we have different actors to play the parts. And they played it exactly as we should. 
But it's a great story to tell. And I think they really show what Pixar can really do. And this, and I show, and it joins in with all the other Pixar films that you'll love and cherish. And I, I'm just glad they did this story. No matter how, how they struggle so hard. The important is, is love and friendship, courage, bravery, and and also have you can do whatever you can as long as you, you work so hard and practice and it's a very touching film so that's the good dinosaur and I give the film four and a half stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye